Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and for our second video today we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMDF, the UK Met Office run, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up looking at the UK Met Office precipitation and temperature for the next five days. Now we have very mild conditions around at the moment, another day of 14, 15 degrees quite widely and that's going to continue into the first couple days of January. However, by next week it's looking like we're going to be seeing quite a cold northerly wind before it will generally stay chilly but with, gen with sort of a general north westerly wind. It's not going to be Amazingly cold, but it's not going to be mild either. Could be quite a bit of snow potentially over high ground in the north. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me as well. The links in the description. Also check out the uh, channel membership if you're interested, and buy me a coffee, of course. Um, and also check out the video um, that I posted earlier. I'll link it up in the top right where we had a look at what is happening in the stratosphere. Because as we'll see in this video, it's we've got the tropospheric polar vortex really on our side of the pole, giving us this northwesterly to westerly wind over the next week or two. And what's happening in the stratosphere could be a bit of a spanner in the works towards the middle and end of January. So do, do check that out. Not looking like a major sun stratospheric warming at this stage, but yeah, definitely some interesting developments. So if you do have a look at the latest from the GFS, you can see the balmy southwesterly winds moving in at the moment. Now, for many areas, it's been quite drizzly um, and weather fronts have pushed through. So even though temperatures have been pretty mild, really, it hasn't felt particularly warm really 15 16 degrees with some sunshine it can feel really pleasant in spring or autumn but with the cloud and the drizzle we've had around it hasn't felt that amazing but at least um at least there's no hat and gloves for example um it is relatively mild out there however i know a lot of people would prefer this snow to be honest you can see we continue with these sort of south southwesterly winds but as we head towards sunday we see fresher air coming off the atlantic um, and it's going to think, turn things chillier before you see we get a brief ridge of high pressure towards Iceland, which is going to push down a colder air mass. Now, on this latest GFS run, we don't clear that low through as quickly, so it sort of takes away the sharpness of this northerly wind. So we still get the colder air mass through, but it won't be as many showers around, and um, it won't last as long. Looking around 24 to 40 hours at this stage, by sort of next Tuesday, Wednesday time, for that colder air mass. And then GFS has quite a large, uh, milder sector um, on this run. That moves through, and then we generally go into that northwesterly pattern with chilly air coming in off the North Atlantic. You see the minus five line come through, but as I've said before, coming in off the North Atlantic across quite a long ocean track, it picks up quite a bit of moisture, so there'll be quite a few showers and potentially wintry showers in the north and over hills. But it also ra uh, raises the dew point and the temperatures at the surface. Because remember, the oceans are around 7, 8, 9, 10 degrees in the North Atlantic. So it's going to mean, um, even though the upper air temperatures are pretty chilly, towards the surface, temperatures are going to be around, maybe below average if we keep the air mass hanging around for long enough. We continue in that sort of northwesterly wind and we see small little low pressure systems move through, which could bring some more enhanced precipitation. Of course, it could be wintry for some. Again, it all depends on the exact details and dew points, because for example, for this small low pressure system, you can see there is big contrast around minus one at 50 HPA to minus five in the space of 100 miles, 50 miles or so. Um, and again, if we have a look at dew points, you can see in the milder sector, six, seven degree dew points, freezing dew points to the north, and then two meter temperatures, you can see very big differences, freezing across Ireland, Northern England, seven or eight degrees in the south. So we could see big differences um, with the chillier air mass uh, and these small low pressure systems moving in, but we'll have to keep an eye really what happens. We are seeing the potential pattern of some ridging of high pressure towards Iceland, which would encourage cold air in from the north, but we're only seeing hints of that, and we'll see with the GM in a minute. It shows quite a potent northerly wind at day 10, but nothing too crazy, um, as we still have a lot of low pressure towards northern Canada. So it's not going to be sustained, but it's going to be pretty chilly. And we continue with this sort of colder northeasterly flow. As I said again, not massively cold because we have all this low pressure towards Greenland and northern Canada, which is waiting in the wings to be coming in. So it's not going to be um, sort of locked in cold by any means before the high pressure sinks and we go into a real quite flat westerly. Now we are quite far into the extended range of the GFS. So I wouldn't look at this in too much detail as we are heading towards the middle of January. There's a lot more things that 
co could come into play. But this is more of a milder westerly wind. You can see high pressure is shifted further northwards. The wind direction is coming from more of a southwesterly. Um, and again, if you have a look at the upper air temperatures, a lot more milder air waiting the wings to be moving in for the UK. Before right to the end of the run, actually looks like another chillier air mass is moving back in. But as you can see, nothing major cold, majorly cold, but it's looking pretty chilly, and there could be quite a bit of snow around across northern areas um, with some elevation. And you can rule it out to some areas in the south as well. If we do see one of these northerly winds come in, or we do sustain that colder air mass. One thing I do want to point out is why we're seeing this. And it's sort of the opposite pattern we want to see. You see a big block that's actually the other side of the pole towards Alaska, Siberia. That's shifting the tropospheric polar vortex over towards our side of the pole. Um, now, earlier uh, in the winter, or the last few weeks, we've had more of the tropospheric polar vortex a bit further to the other side of the pole with blocking on our side. One thing it does mean is a lot of colder air is shifted to our side of the pole. As you can see, there's a lot more colder air in around Scandinavia, Greenland, and to northeast Canada, which means generally the North Atlantic is going to be pretty chilly, and we're staying in a chilly air mass, but nothing uh, crazy in terms of blocking. So that's why we're seeing this sort of westerly pattern, because the blocking on the other side of the pole is forcing um, the tropospheric polar vortex to our side. But it is not looking majorly mild at this stage. It's looking chilly, but as I said, um, nothing too crazy. So we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Again, southwesterly winds at the moment. And then eventually that low does clear through. We see that northerly wind once again. It is all depending on how quickly that low moves through to see how cold that air mass does get. But we see that cold air move through for a time. High pressure tries to hold on. So we could see a few chillier nights here with some widespread frosts. Before we see a smaller milder sector than the GFS run before into that polar maritime air mass in off the North Atlantic. And we just stay in that flow. A few milder sectors coming in here or there, but generally quite a chilly flow. And as I said, right towards the end of the run, we're seeing the potential for some bigger amplification towards Iceland, pulling down a potent northerly wind. Could be wintry with that, and could pull, pull down an even colder air mass than if we were just seeing northwesterly winds. But once again, you can see all those blues and purples towards northeast Canada, low pressure that will be trying to flatten the jet stream. And again, if we have a look at the north and hemisphere look, you can see there isn't any massive blocking towards the north and hemisphere um, or north pole. Um, that could sort of sustain this. So we have to see really what happens. Again, anything beyond A7 has a lot of uncertainty as associated with it. So we could be seeing a pattern here uh, of quite chilly conditions, nothing majorly cold, but chilly with temperatures around or below average with a lot of northwesterly winds and northern incursions like the GM is showing here. We do pull down a much colder air mass for all. So we have to keep an eye on this over the next few weeks. Of course, if this, no if this high pressure does get further northwards, um, it could turn into a bit of a Scandinavian high um, or... Uh, or just become a sort of small blocking feature, and that could maintain the cold because, of course, January is sort of the peak time for the coldest temperatures over the northern hemisphere. So even if we do have a northwesterly wind or northerly wind, that can be really quite cold with short um, daylight hours and very cold air masses to our north. Um, we don't need that much to keep pretty chilly conditions on the surface. Now, if we have a look at the east MJF, see how that does compare. Again, you can see a lot of southwesterly winds at the moment, and then we see that northerly wind move in, and then we go into that polar maritime air mass with flat northwesterly winds. You can see it's ice bars coming in from Greenland. Pretty chilly air masses. Of course, milder sectors moving in for a time, but generally temperatures are around or slightly below average, and right towards the end of the run. We've got a big, vigorous low pressure system, big milder sector, but also quite a big cold sector. As I said, once again, we are seeing a bit of a signal, but maybe for a bit of a ridge with another transient northerly. Um, again, in a sort of pattern of northwesterly to westerly winds, a transient northerly winds like we're seeing next Tuesday, uh, Wednesday time, and potentially towards the end of this run, um, are not too bad in terms of scenarios. Not too, uh, too unusual to see in the winter, and it can produce some winchiness, uh, uh, maybe some snowfall for some. No major cold looking likely over the next week or two. Um, but as as we can see, it's not it's not it's not cra it's not amazingly bad. It's not southwesterly winds by any means. It's still going to be chilly. There's going to be some colder opportunities, especially in the north and over higher ground. Uh, and, and of course, it'll be around average, if not colder than average, for pretty much um, everywhere. If we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, so let's compare again. It only goes up to 168 hours. 
Uh, but again, it's the most highly regarded model. So as you can see, southwesterly winds really quite mild over the next couple of days with 14, 15, maybe even 16 degrees possible in a few spots. And then we see that northerly winds move in. A bit more potent on the UK Met Office run. So maybe we are still going to be seeing really quite cold air mass move through. All the other models are still showing the minus 5 lane getting through. But it's not quite as direct as this UK Met Office run is showing. Um, and this would be yeah, really quite cold. Eventually, the high pressure that brings that does topple, and we see a milder sector move in at about 168 hours. You can see that northwesterly flow. Really quite chilly conditions coming in from the northwest, but a typical northwesterly um, pattern, zonal um, pattern. Um, so, yeah, looking yeah, not great for any major cold conditions. As I said, there still could be some chilly and colder, uh, snowier weather around with this sort of pattern. Um, but it will be very marginal to low-lying areas. Um, highest likelihood, of course, being the north and over higher ground when we do have those cold air masses move through. Now, if we have a look at the GFS ensembles, uh, for the last bit, have a look at the longer-range uh, forecast. You can see generally really warm upper air temperatures at the moment, potentially peaking at 10 degrees uh, for the first day of the year, so really, really quite mild. And then we see conditions starting to drop away quite considerably, down from 10 degrees at of THPA, down to minus 5 by the 4th, 5th of January. You can see that really quite cold temperatures only last around 24 to 48 hours. Um, a couple of models have it lasting, uh, sorry, a couple of some members have it lasting longer, but the majority have a milder air mass moving through. Operational run showing really mild air mass. The majority are going to around freezing at of THPA, so still pretty chilly. Um, but not, uh, not nothing major cold. And then beyond that, you can see most of the ensemble members have temperatures in around 0 to minus 5 at 50 HPA, which isn't quite cold enough for snow um, in the south, especially coming from a northwesterly direction, but it could be cold enough for snow in the north, but it would just been generally be pretty chilly um, with a lot of showers around. And you can see pretty consistent towards the middle of January. Of course, a lot can change, as we've seen with the models over the last few weeks. So at the moment, I wouldn't really be looking at anything too much much detail beyond maybe the 8th or uh, 7th, 8th of January. It does look pretty firm um, now within the models that we're going to be seeing the northwesterly pattern. Um, but what happens after that, there's yeah, still a lot of uncertainty in play. Because, of course, some of the models are trying to show that ridging towards Iceland at 810, which could, of course, bring some colder conditions back in for a few days. But, of course, we'll have to see how it does play out. If you look at the two metre temperatures, you can see generally, from around the 5th of January um, all the way to the middle of January, temperatures are going to be around uh, maybe a touch below average, depending on the exact timings of milder sectors um, and um, depending on the ensemble members, of course. The average is around 5, 6 degrees uh, at 2 metres, which is around the January average, uh, 5, 6 degrees in the south uh, for daytime highs. But I do suspect if we do see um, that colder polar maritime air mass move through. Like you're seeing with the operational run here, around 9th, 10th, you see highs of around 3, 4 degrees on a lot of these ensemble members. Um, it's getting pushed up a little bit by some mild outliers. So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on those 2 meter temperatures, but they're not looking warm, but they're not looking bitterly cold at this stage. If we have a look at Glasgow, uh, just to give us a perspective further northwards, um, because I do suspect there could be a bit more increased wintriness further northwards. You can see really quite cold that northerly, potentially temperatures uh, hovering around freezing or maybe just a touch above uh, across Scotland. And then you can see all the way from around the 6th, 7th, we do see temperatures recover to maybe 5, 6 degrees. And then we see temperatures really hovering around 2 or 3. So not bitterly cold, not around, not freezing temperatures every day, but cold enough that if we did see precipitation fall out of the sky, evaporative cooling, uh, falling overnight, we could definitely see some snow events at times. Especially over higher ground, we can rule out to low-lying areas as well with this cooler northwesterly flow. Again, all depends on the exact wind direction and air mass. Uh, subtle, subtle shifts in direction uh, could shorten or lengthen the sea track and that can change these upper air temperatures uh, and surface temperatures as well. And of course, any snow or wintry we do see with a northwesterly wind is very, very marginal indeed. No guarantees at all. Also, just have a look at new snow depths like, just to give us an idea. And you can see quite, quite, quite a decent smackering of snow uh, depth spike throughout January. 
uh, early parts of January, which isn't too unusual, of course, for Glasgow. So anyone saying it's going to be a massive, mild fest over the next few weeks uh, is not looking at the data. Um, the data is showing that it's going to be chilly. It's just not going to be widespread cold. Um, and it's just got to be really quite seasonable. Chilly in the north with some wintriness potential and just generally cold uh, and chilly in the south. But nothing too crazy. If we now finish up, have a look at the UK Met Office run. Have a look at the next five days. It does actually go into scope of the northerly wind we could be seeing um, early next week. So we'll be able to look at if there's any wintry potential with that. You can see rain moving through tonight. Um, quite some heavy rain at times. Maybe a bit of heavy rain for up to early mornings in the south as well. Weather front pushing over northwards. And that could linger throughout tomorrow across Scotland. Generally a dry day, but with a lot of drizzle um, and cloud around. See another weather front move through for 1st of January. It does look like there could be a bit of sunshine around on New Year's Day, but still some heavier patches of rain. Weather front's pushing in. Um, and eventually we do see more of a westerly theme for the 2nd of January. You can see that wind direction coming in from more of a west to northwesterly wind. Um, and then eventually you start seeing some wintriness come in to the, uh, to the models by Monday. Some snow potentially across parts of northern Scotland. Some heavier snow there. And then as we head through Monday into Tuesday, showers turning more wintry, especially in the north, parts of northern Ireland, Scotland, and even down the east coast as well, seeing some wintry showers in parts of Wales as well. Quite a smacker of wintry showers there. She couldn't rule out quite a few areas, maybe early next week. Could see the odd wintry shower here or there. No guarantees of any massive snowfall, but could be, of course, a few wintry showers. So if we do have a look at the max temperatures, you'll see it is very, very mild at the moment. It's going to be not dropping down much below 12 or 13 degrees tonight. By tomorrow afternoon, we can once again see temperatures return to around 13, 14 degrees, really quite mild. And by New Year's Day, the warmest <laughs> and coldest day of 2022 so far, um, it will be, of course... 13, 14 degrees, potentially, um, which is yeah, really, really mild for the 1st of January. However, as we head through to the 2nd of January, you see those temperatures starting to drop, maybe hanging on to 10 or 11 in the far southeast, but in the north, dropping into single digits once again, 5, 6, 7 degrees. And by Monday the 3rd, you're seeing that cold round mass really spread in from the north. Still 9 or 10 degrees in the far south. Across Scotland, starting to see those freezing temperatures return. And all areas are in that cold round mass by Tuesday. Really quite cold on Tuesday morning. Widespread frost for most of the country, maybe by the far southeast. And by Tuesday afternoon, most areas, 2, 3, or maybe peaking at 4 degrees. So even though this northern is only going to last maybe a day or two, it is pretty potent, considering what we've had recently. It's going to bring temperatures in or around freezing, maybe a touch above freezing in the south, but really quite cold in the north, and we could see some wintriness around with it. But at this stage, no major cold coming on at the moment. I know some people will be disappointed with that, um, but there is still a long way to go um, in winter. Of course, we can see heavy, significant snowfalls all the way into March, so don't lose hopes yet. Of course, it's looking northwesterly over the next sort of week to 10 days, but things can change very quickly. Quickly, So do make sure you stay tuned um, to the forecast. Uh, and of course, do keep an eye on the weather warnings, of course, because I do expect there could be some ice and snow warnings out, especially across parts of Scotland and the north over the next week, especially with the northerly wind and potentially from the northwesterly later next week. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.